we showed that two vaccines, a DNA vaccine and a purified inactivated virus vaccine, both provided complete protection against Zika virus challenge in mice. A DNA vaccine is a simple snippet of DNA, and for this vaccine, we included the pre-membrane and envelope regions of the Zika virus. They're like the outer coat of the virus. Exactly. After injection with a simple needle and syringe, the DNA goes into host cells and expresses the protein, and then the body makes an immune response to that protein. So effectively what you're doing is showing the body the genetic message corresponding to a part of the virus, but crucially not the whole virus. And then when cells see that DNA message, they can use it just like a piece of their own DNA, and they make that component of the virus, triggering the production of immune elements that will give protection. That's correct. Now, you said you also made a second vaccine, which was you just had some Zika virus, you killed it or deactivated it, and that also worked as a jolly good vaccine. Which of the two seems to be the best choice? I think at this point in time, both are good choices. The purified inactivated virus vaccine is essentially virus that's been grown up and then chemically inactivated to make it safe. One of the benefits is that it is very similar to other clinically approved vaccines. So the purified inactivated virus vaccine is a tried and true approach. How did you test them? So mice were vaccinated with one or the other of the vaccines, and then four weeks later, they were infected with Zika virus strains from either Brazil or from Puerto Rico. And to test whether the vaccine worked, we looked at the amount of virus in the bloodstream of the animals. All the unvaccinated mice had high levels of virus replication in the blood, whereas all of the vaccinated mice show no virus detectable in the blood after a challenge with Zika virus. How did you get the Zika virus into the mice? Uh, virus was uh, injected uh, intravenously. So you don't know whether or not this would protect against mosquito-transmitted Zika at this stage? Well, we need to be cautious about extrapolating the mouse data to humans, including the method of transmission as well as the complexities of uh, infection in humans compared with infection of laboratory animals. I raise that point because we heard last week from Clive McKimmy at Leeds University showing that when you have a mosquito bite, the mosquito bite has an incredibly powerful amplifying effect which might increase by tenfold the chances of an individual succumbing to a mosquito-borne infection, including Zika. And therefore, that might be an important consideration when working out whether these vaccines are going to work. Absolutely. And there are many other considerations for humans as well, including the potential role of antibodies against other related viruses, such as dengue, and whether or not those antibodies might impact the ability of the vaccine to raise immune responses or to protect. I was going to ask you that very thing, because this is part of a big family of viruses, Zika, and they have a lot of similarities, they have a lot of differences, but if you take one of those other viruses, like dengue, which is very common, there will be lots of people in the population who have already been infected with that. Have you tried testing mice that have had pre-exposure to dengue to see if they can mount a response against Zika? And also, is there not a danger that uh, if they have had exposure to other members of this family before, they might mount a dangerous response against your vaccine? Those are very important questions, and we are exploring those currently as we speak. We don't yet have any results to report from those experiments, but we hope to do so soon. One of the things that's got people really quite worried about Zika was its threat to unborn infants and the congenital abnormalities, for instance, microcephaly, that can ensue. Have you tried vaccinating mice that you then made pregnant to see if you could protect them? Again, a very good question, and we have those studies uh, ongoing as we speak. At the moment, we don't know the answer to that, but we uh, intend to obtain the answer uh, in the near future.